Welcome, this is Alex, and I'm taking an early look at the space shooter adventure Everspace 2. But before getting into the traditional breakdown of what exactly this is, I want to start this all off with a little memorable space story of my own. So an hour or so into the game, I leave the unconfining confines of space and touch down on my very first planet. Although no HUD indicators are picking up anything of interest to go check out over there, hey, this huge space drill looks like it would make for some decent B-roll footage for this video I'm making, right? Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. However, I noticed you can actually fly down into the inner workings of this thing, which I was definitely not expecting. But then that led down into a small underground crystalline cavern with some kind of container that was missing its power supply. I'm officially intrigued. Heading back into the drill section, I'm sure the thing doesn't really need this Duracell, so I strip that off and use that to power the nearby container. That then pops out some useful space loot, one of which was an energy core that was actually better than the one I had on, and then I proceeded to make my escape after a quick mining excursion of my own. This all was not part of a quest, nothing that the game yelled obviously at me to go do, just an awesome natural space adventuring moment that was carefully designed into this environment. Maybe some players would find it, maybe they won't. It exists there all the same. Now this might be one part that I'm currently watching The Mandalorian Season 2, but this interaction was the most Star Wars feeling moment I have felt out of numerous recent actual licensed Star Wars games. Heck, one of the ship classes even has an ultimate ability that is pretty much just dark side force lightning, so canonically in my brain, the Emperor is 100% the pilot of my ship. Everspace 2 is not a roguelite like the first Everspace outing, which I did enjoy, but this sequel's change to a more traditional single player campaign with shockingly better production values has made for one of the best times I have had in virtual space in nearly a decade even though this is just day zero of early access, not my preferred way to usually play games. Now let's take a brief moment and look at this. Cool screenshot, right? Probably one of those highly doctored ones I just ripped off the official site. But wait, nope, this is just how good Everspace 2 looks at any given moment during actual gameplay. I'm not one to spend too much time in most photo modes unless I'm trying to capture for a thumbnail or something, but I found myself frequently pausing the action here just to get a look at this graphics engine and what they have done with it. Of course, graphics don't really matter if the gameplay is butt, and I'm very picky when it comes to how my space sims and space shooters control, but again, Everspace 2 crushes it here as well. Movement and shooting really only takes a few minutes to get used to, and how naturally it all feels makes combat feel fast, responsive, and most importantly, fun. Most all encounters don't just devolve down into slowly turning and turning, desperately trying to track just one target. You can quickly accelerate and decelerate with great precision, letting you do some of those more tricky space combat maneuvers that you usually only see demonstrated in films. In terms of the combat system, there are all kinds of different weapon types to equip that deal either more damage to shields or armor, along with special abilities that adhere to simple cooldown timers, letting you frequently enjoy your arsenal instead of it feeling more like you're wasting a limited resource. Your missiles and bombs will need to be restocked, however. Those active abilities can be upgraded to do additional effects, along with a few other RPG mechanics like leveling up your gear, your pilot, and people you add to your base who provide a variety of improvements after you supply them with the right resources. There are different ship classes you can acquire from certain outposts that have different stats and ultimate abilities as well. These can be visually customized, but you will need to unlock the majority of the customization options while out exploring. If you want to look space fancy, you're going to have to earn it. The game world of Everspace 2 is not seamlessly one big open universe, and instead it opts for having medium-sized chunks of space and planetary sections that you hop between in this hyperspace style of mode where there's no combat and it's just travel. While heading to your next main destination, dynamic locations or situations can pop up while you're traveling, and you can steer off to do these if you please, if you want more experience, loot, combat practice, or something more unorthodox. In this location, for example, I used reflective panels to bounce a mining laser at a mineral that was just too hard for my blasters to dislodge. 
There are many just blow this up, kill these guys style of encounters in Everspace 2, but there are also just as many strange situations you will come across, which will keep your imagination active as you travel to the different sectors. I think that covers mostly everything you need to know about Everspace 2, so let's start wrapping this up. I'm not one to usually prefer playing games during their early access period because so many come out at near unacceptable quality, but like I mentioned towards the start of this, Everspace 2 is a big exception. This really raises the bar for the state in which early access games can start at with a hearty amount of content, limited jank, and fully functional and enjoyable gameplay mechanics. This was easily the most raw fun I have had in a space game in longer than I can even remember now. So in the end, that's Everspace 2 in a space nutshell, or at least my experience with it, and if you enjoyed this breakdown, I would love to hear it, and if you didn't, I would love to hear it. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.